We're in the Bitterroot Mountain Range of Northern Idaho and Western Montana. Have you ever wanted to travel back in time to the days of your childhood memories? In order to gain experience, you have to experience it. I don't just mean a lot, I mean a lot of gold. I told you this is a good spot. The old buzzard roots mine. You can learn a lot about life by teaching others. There's not too many things that are more rewarding. Dig, 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 dig. Dig, dig. You got mud all over your face, man. job and I made up my mind to spend my life looking for gold. That old gold bug really bit me good and I'm doomed so I've been told. That's not good. I got metal detectors up the old yin yang, a gold bridge and a four wheel drive. I'd be better if you shot me cause gold fever's really got me and I'm hooked as long as I'm alive. Go, 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 fever, ba, 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 go, This episode of Gold go, Fever go, is sponsored go, in part by Mine Lab, world's best metal detection technologies, and by Gold Prospectors Association of America. It's not about having the gold, it's about finding the gold. Well, welcome to Gold Fever. I got my son Kale here along for the ride. I tell you, that's a pretty ominous sight out there, and there ain't no amount of gold worth getting burned up over. So we got it stopped us dead in our tracks out here. We're heading out to the headwaters of the St. Joe River. We're going to be going up there doing a little bit of prospecting and poking around at the original old Buzzard Roost Mine. Now, the Buzzard, that was my dad's nickname, Kale's grandfather, and Kale was born after he passed away, so he never got a chance to know his grandfather. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to come out here and go back into his old diggings out here, kind of the start of the Gold Prospectors Association out here uh, in the backwoods country. And we're going to have a really good adventure. We're glad you're along, but hopefully this wildfire doesn't catch up to us. Keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> You better wait and go in there, man. Whew, it just lingers in there, man. Might just have to sleep out here. That's one of the things why you still got daylight. You want to set up your camp so you're not doing that in the dark. And then gather firewood so you're not doing that in the dark. Those two things. Okay. Let's zip this up. It was amazing. We were able to find the exact same camping spot where we camped 40 years earlier with my dad and my brother. Except back then we had a camper, a little bit more cozier than a tent. The trees grew just a little bit bigger, but it was the same location. Well, before we get to cooking out here, this is serious bear country. And I don't know, this year there's been a lot of encounters by bears. A few people been killed, even uh, pretty close to where we're at right now. And then, uh, you know, they also have Bigfoot around here too. <laughs> Maybe. But this is, uh, when I was thinking about bear protection out here, which is a wise thing to do, I thought about this rifle right here. Because this rifle's been to St. Joe Lake. It's been out here a lot. And this is your grandpa's hunting rifle. Wow. It's a Winchester 7mm mag, and it's quite the gun. It's put a lot of food on the table that I've eaten, and I want to give this to you 
and I'm passing it on down to you, but you should probably shoot it a few times and get used to it. Yeah. But that's uh, that's your grandpappy's hunting rifle right there. Yeah, man, I, got, I already feel just the history in it. I mean, you feel pretty honored to have it. Well, you want to go test a couple rounds off? All right, here you go. Boy, you know, there's some strange tales around these parts. Yeah, One of the things when we go up to the lake tomorrow, make sure you don't drink any water from the lake. Because the Indians around here, there's a story that if you drink water from the lake, something's going to happen to you. Like the lake will swallow you up. And I don't like to go against those stories, yeah. you know? It's no point in it. Why? You don't need to drink the water from the lake. So don't drink the water from the lake. It'll swallow you up. And I can tell you another story. You ever see that, that Bigfoot video of the Bigfoot and he's walking yeah. and he like, turns aside? That wasn't too far from right here. Yeah, I know. And years ago, you know, Grandpa, he wasn't one to believe in Bigfoots and superstitions and like a lot of that stuff. But there was one night, not too different than tonight. We were sitting around the campfire and it's a little bit farther, his camp was a little farther up the river, but we were sitting around and all of a sudden we started smelling this smell, like real strong odor. Not like a skunk smell, but it was a a, a kind of a putrid smell. Can't explain the smell. It wasn't a good smell. You knew it wasn't a good smell, but everybody smelled at the same time. We all commented on it. And then we heard this sound. And it wasn't like a mountain lion cry, because I've heard mountain lions cry, and that's an eerie sound when you hear a mountain lion cry. And it wasn't like an elk bugling. It was a low, gutterly sound. And it wasn't real loud, but we all heard it at the same time. And those guys, they went and they grabbed, they grabbed the seven millimeter, they grabbed the gun. Yeah. Grandpa had the gun and he was ready. It's my first reaction. And it was off down towards the creek and it wasn't too far away. And we could hear branches snapping and something moving big over there. And everybody was, I wasn't, for some reason I was only like six years old. I wasn't as scared of what was going on. I remember it, but what scared me the most was here was, you know, big grandpa and those other big miners and they were scared. That's what I'll never forget. The fear in them, they were scared. They were like, they had no idea what was going on. And it scared them. And the whole night, I mean, it was just, edges they went down there and i went with grandpa the next morning we went down to the creek and there were branches 10 feet high broken off and there were tracks there were bigfoot tracks there were some big tracks down there they weren't elk tracks they weren't you know bear tracks it was something really really big and you know we thought about it and i was even think about it like you know, would somebody be crazy enough to try and pull a hoax? I mean, because it's like right now. I mean, there's nobody around. I mean, we're out here. This is like remote country. And somebody would be just yeah. Italy stupid to try and like do some kind of prank because they could have got shot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these guys, they were ready to, to open up fire. But, you know, it's dark and you can't see over there. And it was... It was a really hair-raising experience, and I never forget it. It's a true story, and, and I didn't actually see Bigfoot, but that was some serious evidence 
I mean, it was, it was, it it shocked me. You know, I don't think anyone would do that with uh, Grandpa with the gun. He saw one shady movement, then he probably would have shot. Well, you know, it's kind of eerie when you sit here around the campfire. You can see right around the campfire, but you look off yeah. there in the woods and it's pitch black. You can't see out in the woods, you know, at night. But if you're standing out there in the woods and you're looking this direction, you could see us just easy. So yeah. something out there that wants to watch you, they can be watching you real easy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. It, it's, it's real eerie when you get lightning, and then all of a sudden, for a brief second, you, like the whole woods are lit up, and you can see everything for like a second, you know, and you're looking like, wow, man, somebody's watching. They can see us. Well, we'll uh, cozy up. I think we'll put the gun between us. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, if anything starts coming in the tent, and I don't wake up, yeah, I'll, I'll you can use your gun. I'll be ready for you. And uh, we'll have uh, steak and eggs in the morning, get a good meal, and head up the trail. Damn, that sounds like a great plan. first crack of dawn, the fresh morning dew, and the crisp mountain air. It's good to be alive. Wake up with steak and eggs, I'll go to the lake. I think it's going to be really good there. Well, we get up there, maybe we can find the old original Buzzard's Roost mine, but I got a feeling it's going to be pretty hard to find with everything growing up because it was 40 years ago they were mining in there. It's probably all grown up, probably going to be hard to find, but I got an idea where it's at. You ready to roll, Kale? Yeah, let's do this. All right, well, you can see here where they put a Kelly hump in the road here. This used to be the road going up through here. Yeah. Six miles up to the lake. Twelve miles round trip. Sounds good. All right. I'm glad to see you got the pack. Yeah. Grandpa used to make me carry a pack everywhere I went. <laughs> yeah, I'm the meal for today. I can't remember going anywhere without a pack on my back when I was little. I look at this picture and I wonder why my brother doesn't have a pack on his back. But I wouldn't trade those childhood memories for anything. And having an opportunity to spend time in the outdoors with my son Kale, well, that's a treasure worth more than gold. some of these old cone top style beer cans and grandpa said hey you can collect those and I found a whole bunch of them that were still good and they're worth a lot of money sometimes you can find old whiskey bottles and stuff out here that are uh, pretty good shape because nobody ever comes out here and looks for them you know and they just sit out here yeah in this age yeah Take a little breather by this cabin. Yeah. Last time I was here, the roof was on it about 35 years ago. I think I carved my name in it over there, but looks like that part fell in. Look at the size of these beams, though, or these logs. 
Yeah, these are still going strong. Yeah, that is a thick log. You put your name in there? Yeah, I got a little KTM. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks like you found a piece of our old radio too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Still. I'll bet your metal tech around here you find some old relics. You can see a stove over there. Keep pushing. Yeah, about two miles an hour is about my pace. It's a little slow, but you know, it's all in the pacing. Yeah. I got this, uh, what they call plantar fasciitis working on me, so that's hopefully doesn't stop me. It might slow me down a little bit, but it doesn't stop me. Well, we made our way over here to Old Man Brazington's mine. And it's pretty much reclaimed now. There's not much of the mine left, but he had a 100-ton dredge in here. Wow. And Old Man Brazington, he was kind of cut from that older cloth where he'd throw open his jacket and he had his six-shooter underneath there and he'd say, draw! You know, he was one of those olden day, real rambunctious kind of character. You know, and he had this big dredge in here and he'd get guys from down Superior Way to come up here and help him out and he'd put them on the tailings, cleaning out tailings. You know what it's like cleaning out tailings, huh? Yeah, I do. But it's, I heard stories about he'd let them build up on them and if they didn't clean them out fast enough, he'd just bury them under the tailings. There might be a couple of guys buried out here that didn't shovel tailings fast enough. But this was his mine and Round over here was his cabin. And I'm gonna go up there and I'll tell you a story about old man Brazen. He was he was a character and he was ornery, but man, he had some gold. I mean a lot of gold. I don't just mean a lot, I mean a lot of gold. Alright. Let's mosey on up the creek here over to his cabin. Well, this was old man Brazington's cabin. Now, Grandpa came out here hunting elk uh, way back when, and he come across old man Brazington, and they came in here and befriended him because Grandpa was a friendly guy. And I'll never forget coming over here, and I seen it with my own eyes. Old man Brazington, he came back here in the back part of the cabin and he come walking back out with a fruit jar that was plumb full of nuggets. Wow. And he said, you boys want to know how to find gold? And he set that thing on there and he said, that's how you find gold. And then they got to talk a little while longer and he come back and he went and he got another one. Set that one out there. He went back and he got another one. He had three fruit jars plumb full of fortune in gold. And this was his front door and he had a cellar going down here and the back room over here and he'd go back in that back room and get them fruit jars full of gold. And I'll bet you someplace around here, down maybe in this cellar somewhere, them fruit jars are full of gold might still be laying around in here. Yeah, we need to swing a metal detector. Well, this would be a good place to do some digging. I didn't think if you just kind of dug down in here you might find something. Yeah, I guess you see someone out here, can't really have that far part of interest. Yeah. Well, what do you say we go check out some of the other mines? Let's do it. about 200 yards down there, I was freaking out. What happened? Cause I, I wasn't recognizing anything. I was like, man, is that Illinois Peak up there? Are we on the left side of it? And maybe we took a wrong turn and we're going up over the divide pass or something. And 
things just weren't looking right and wasn't clicking and I said man we've been hiking for hours and we ain't got there yet and it was I was really thinking we might be lost well not lost but you know going the wrong way and on foot that makes a big difference you know and when I turned the corner we come up through this little meadow and I saw this waterfall right here it's like I remember that. That's something that's a beautiful waterfall, just burns into your memory, this meadow right here. Something spectacular, you never forget it. And now I know we're in the right spot. Lake's just up there. Remember, don't drink the water from the lake. All right. Whoo! There Ooh. she blows! This looks gorgeous. Yeah! St. Joe Lake. Uh, Want to go for a swim? Go for a swim? You're going to purify yourself in the waters of the St. Joe? Yeah, man. That water's cold. Nice cold water. Echo! 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 Well, if you're going in, I'm going in. Then we're doing it. All right, it'll feel good. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to go in. You better do it. I feel all refreshed in the nude, huh? Yeah. Ready to hike back. I'm gonna button my shirt up so I don't look like Randy Wheeler. <laughs> Grandma used to always say if I run around with my shirt unbuttoned, I look like, Randy, you look like Randy Wheeler. You better button your shirt up. She used to chew me out. But I got a couple of places back here where there's some exposed bedrock I saw on the way up that I wanted to stick a pan in. And, uh, Maybe we'll run the sluice box we get back down there a little farther, but we got a ways to hike, so I figure we better start heading back and uh, so we don't run out of daylight. But this is a beautiful yeah. sight up here, huh? Yeah, St. Joe Lake. Absolutely gorgeous. Glad you guys came along with us. Let's go see if we can find some color, huh? Yeah, let's go get some gold. You can see all this stuff here. This is what they call uh, cone bedrock. And right now there's not much water flowing, but uh, when there's a lot of water flowing and it's flowing across here, and this is the kind of stuff that it takes to, the gold will stop right on top of it. And I want to take a sample. So let's sample. Here, you take this. I'll take this. Now, I'm gonna get some from right here of this moss. Put that in there and wash that out. Because sometimes what happens is this moss will act like a carpet and the gold will come down and get stuck in there. I'm gonna pull that stuff all up from right in there. See how that material gets stuck in there? Yeah, it's all chunky. Yeah. It's gotta be hard to find here. Uh, no, you just kind of wash the moss out like a carpet. See there, that's good stuff right there. And find a little slower place in the pan. Like right here. Put that in there and then you just wash this, break this moss up just like a, like you, you know, doing a carpet. It's 
called Mossy. <laughs> Toss those bigger pieces out of there. Mossy. Now you don't get hardly any black sand. And a little piece of gold. A little piece of gold. Really? See that right there? Another one right there. A couple little specks. Yep. And that's what that tells you is there's gold in the area. Yeah, there's gold in this. You know? And I'm su suspicious, you know, that old timer's cabin up there, he prospected and prospected up through here and found him a hot spot. And uh, the gold's better farther down you go. And it's, uh, you know, pretty coarse up here, but that's yellow gold right there. A couple little pieces. That looks like a piece of gold with mercury on it. No, it's a piece of lead. That's what that is. That's a piece of lead. It's trapping lead. No, look, one, two, three pieces of gold and a little piece of lead. And the lead's heavy too. The gold's twice as heavy as the lead, but that lead's heavy too, so it's hanging up in there. Maybe it's caught in the bottom of the gold pan. Yep. Yeah, well, sun's getting lower. We got a long ways to go. Yeah, I got a couple hours of hiking. Okay, well let's get down there. I'll show you the spot where I found my first gold, if I can find it again. Yeah, we gotta go find some nuggets. I'm gonna save those pieces, put them in my snuffer. Go, 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 I'm starting to think. I think right over here, back over in here, we dredged once, and that was the very first time I was like six, seven years old that I ever went down on a nozzle on a dredge. And it's making sense because Grandpa probably found this old hydraulic line and found the old diggings and went up underneath there, and that's why he was working over in there. Yes, indeedy. It's all coming back to me now, Kale. This looks like a magic spot. Yeah, but I don't want people to know about this spot. Okay. This is a special spot for me. You can see some tailings over here along the creek bank. See these rocks right over here? Those are old tailings from, oh, probably 1870, 1860. You could yeah. tell how the moss has grown on them. Yeah. But some of these spots back up underneath here, because they were throwing rocks up there. And when I was like five years old, Grandpa got just tired of me, you know, just hanging around and bugging. He gave me a sluice box and he said, go up the river, go up there and dig your own gold. Go up and find some gold. And so I took the sluice box. I'm pretty sure it was right in this vicinity. I'm not exactly sure because I was five, but I know it was right up in here on this creek and I set the sluice box up and I started digging and I found my very first nugget. I found some gold. Nice. And I'll never forget it. I, that's probably be between uh, old man Brazington's big jars of gold and getting my own gold and seeing grandpa's gold. That's what gave me the gold fever. And I figure we can dig right here and set up our sluice and do a little digging and see if we can't find some of that first time gold. Let's do it. All right.
Try to go down. You could go load that one up. Now we got our little sluice set up and we'll run like 15, 20 pans through. See so you can get the uh, gravelly stuff, even if it's from a little bit more on top. Try and get some more gravelly material. With a little sluice like this, instead of just panning it and panning it and panning it, you can run them through here much quicker, go through more material. And sluice boxes are nice, don't take no gas. You can pack them into real, real remote areas. And you know, you can't run a whole lot of material, but you can run some and it's a lot of fun. TV, internet, video games, peer pressure, the stress of just trying to figure out how you fit into this crazy world can be hard on our young folks. But spending real time in the outdoors prospecting can give you a connection to the past, a real adventure in the present, and a confidence to meet the future. I see color. That looks like gold. Gold, I tell you, it's gold. Those are some bigger pieces too. There's gold in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick one out. I'm gonna pick one out. It's a nugget. It's a nugget. You got yourself a nugget. Nugget. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Let me feel you. Oh, you're hot. You're hot. You're burning up. You got the fever. I'm just going to lift this off of there. We got gold in the sluice. Just careful. What you want to do is you don't want to go against the action of the water. Once that gold rests down in there, it'll stay in there, but you don't want to push against the water because it breaks the eddy. You want to push with the flow of the water. With the flow of the water. I see another nice piece in there. Just kind of knock those bigger pieces on down right with the flow of the water. All right, let, give me the pan you didn't knock a hole in. Okay, tip it up and I'll splash the material out. Let me get around here on this side of you. Okay, we don't want to lose this material. Get it in our pan here. Tip it up and just hold it. There you go. Let's dump it right in the pan.
Yeah! Let's look at that goal. You see it? See pieces? Yeah. You come out? All right, let's dump, dump them in the yeah. pan. Oh, yeah! Yeah, let's dump them in the pan. <laughs> All right. Look in there, see if you see any growlers. No, I think it all went in the pan. All right, let's find a nice calm spot here to pan this out in. <laughs> hey, you want to use that hole in the pan for a safety pan? Okay, let me find a little calm water. Look at that quartz chip. That's a good sign. Usually yeah. where you find quartz, you find gold. All that heavier stuff gets down at the bottom. All right, you want to put that safety pan underneath here? We don't have a whole lot of material. You don't really need a safety pan with my pan because I never lose any gold. Now that's a bunch of material right there concentrated down. Oh, there's the black sand. Whoop, oh, yellow gold. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Woo. That's the yellow stuff right there. That's what we came for. I told you this was rich up in here. I told you this is a good spot. You know, it used to be you get out here and you find some gold like this was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's gold. But, you know, it was only a few dollars. Now, that kind of gold right there, that's, that's, that's some pay right there. You know, a person could come out here and just dig up in here and make wages, you know. So now I'm, I'm putting it all in my snuffer bottle. All those little bits, of, well, that was too big to go through the snuffer bottle. Yeah. But all those little bits and pieces out here that, you know, when you pan, you sample, and you get a little bit, and you used to throw them back like, oh, that's this little bit. Now you can't, man, because it's, it's worth a lot. Got a little nugget over there. Yep. Yeah, you're going to have to pick that one out. Now let's put it in here. Drop it in there. It's too big to go through the straw. It's a good problem. Yeah. There's a few other smaller pieces. There's another one a little there. How about we let these little pieces right here grow up and get bigger, huh? Huh? All right. Huh? Huh? Nope. 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 No, you're keeping it? Nope. You want to check? <laughs> you can check my safety pan. Oh, there's another little fine piece. Whoo! Oh, man. This is a lot of fun out here finding gold. Especially being out in places, you know, that brings back memories. And I'm always going to cherish this little bit of gold we got as this memory out here digging. You got mud all over your face, man. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go and check out some of the other mines. There's some other cool places around out here. All right. Go, 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 fee, ba, 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 ba. Some place around here is the old cabin because here's the outhouse. Yeah, it can't be far. But I heard they burned the old cabin down. The cabin was a, you know, a hundred years old when they were out here. It's kind of a shame, but they got to feuding pretty good. And I think part of why you can't drive a four wheeler up here and why it's foot traffic only is because they made it like that to keep grandpa out or ever coming back. Yeah. They really wanted him out of the woods and there was kind of that culture back then of clearing everybody out of the woods like the woods like you weren't supposed to be in the woods you're supposed to be down there in the city like you know down on the highway and yeah. in town you're not supposed to be out here yeah it's not for them to say yeah well you got some people that you know figure this you know we're custodians of it out here and other people figure that you this ain't your place out here your place is in the city but uh, I'm gonna fan out. Why don't you go and kind of fan out this way? I'll kind of look around this way, see if we can find the old cabin. Uh, All right. I, there's an old dump over here. 
Good old 7-Up bottle. Yeah, they don't make those anymore either. Those are collector items. You like it, it likes you. See, you could clean that all up and that's like antiques right there. I think about just leaving these on the trail for the way back. Yeah. Well, this spot right here, this looks like the only place that I've seen anywhere where it looks like there might be this is some tailings. Yeah. This has yeah. got to be your grandpa's old mine right here. They were digging right in here. And that up there is where they're, they camped. And this is where they were digging right in here. This is where their tailings are. Mother Nature's taking it back in a hurry, huh? Yeah. Still can uh, tell the signs, though. Yeah, but barely. It's pretty hard. Yeah. Not much of it left. The old buzzard roost mine. Well, we better keep hightailing. It is getting dark. Yeah, this is uh, Bostonian Creek. This is uh, old man Henning's place. Old man Henning, I remember coming over here and visiting when this place was in a lot better shape. But you know, I thought he was kind of cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Because when we got over here, I don't think he'd had any visitors in like three years. He used to winter out here. And he was shooting in the air and crying and he was rolling around on the ground and I thought man this is a crazy guy you know and he was talking with grandpa and everything but now I figured out I think he was tipping back a little bit of the you know yeah. cough medicine you know he was a, a little drunk like Cooter Brown you know <laughs> now that I'm older I look back on it but then I was just like about six you know I was a little kid you yeah. know you want to take a look inside, but be careful. Oh, it looks bad in there, man. Yep. It looks bad. Everything's caving in. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go in there, man. It's all busted and caving in. The snow piles up here 15, 20, 30 feet in the wintertime, and it's got it all busted, caved in in here. Oh. Well, I've better seen better days. You know, You'll probably come out here maybe in years and you look, you'll say, I remember when it was still standing before the roof all caved, totally caved in. Yeah. But these places out here are just kind of lost in history. It's a lot of fun coming out here and looking at them. A lot of fun getting out there in the outdoors and prospecting and doing whatever else floats your boat in the outdoors, not having a roof over your head. This is real living if you ask me. Yeah, it is. You know, as such is life, I wish Grandpa was around to enjoy you, because I know you'd enjoy him. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame I didn't get to meet him, but coming out here in these hills and going to his mine, firing his gun, you know, I feel a little bit of a spirit. It feels nice to get in touch with him. Yeah. Maybe well, I'll get as lucky as he did. <laughs> well, folks, we've uh, about run out of time on today's show. My feet are just barking at me real bad. How many miles do you figure we hiked? 30? Yeah, 40? 30. Yeah, it's, it's been quite a few. There's no roads back up in here, you, old trails and stuff, and it's a lot of brush, but it's a lot of fun, a lot of remote places, and that's the places I like. You got no cell phone service, you know, you got no TV. Uh, you got to be careful out here, though, because it's fall time, and you can get a snowstorm come in here and drop four or five feet of snow, and you'd be stuck out here. and. That's some serious business, but it's enjoyable, beautiful place to come, and we're glad that you came along with us out here on this trip, and we'll see you again for another one of these gold fever adventures. <laughs>